Hello everyone, welcome to Dark Matters, where I tell dark stories that may leave you wondering about the hidden secrets lurking in the shadows of our world. Today, I'm going to talk about a haunting ghost story set in Busan's Kupodong, intertwined with a tragic train accident that claimed numerous lives. This heart-wrenching tale lingers in the hearts of many Koreans, evoking a deep sense of sadness that endures through the passage of time. On March 28, 1993, at 5.29pm, at a location approximately 900 meters north of Kupo Station on the Gyeongbu Line in Pukgu, Busan Metropolitan City, the number 117 Mugunghwa train bound for Busan from Seoul derailed and overturned, resulting in 79 deaths and 198 injuries. Called the Kupo Tragedy, it is the worst train accident in the history of South Korea. At the time, the number 117 Mugunghwa train, traveling at a speed of 85 km per hour, was passing Yangsan Mulgum Station, about 1 km away from Kupo Station. The train engineer who noticed the collapse of the track tried to activate the emergency brakes, but it was already too late. In the end, a total of four vehicles, including the locomotive, power car, and passenger cars, derailed and twisted and crumpled like a crushing beer can in a matter of moments. The highest number of casualties occurred in passenger cars number five and six, as the heavily weighted power car fell into a hole and the number six passenger car above it collided with the number five passenger car, causing it to shatter the accident scene where severed heads and limbs were scattered and blood soaked the area like spilled paint was truly a scene of horror. The accident scene on that rainy night was so gruesome that it even caused concerns about the mental well-being of the rescue personnel. Eventually, ghost train legends began to circulate around the accident site, but there is a consistency in the stories that cannot be simply dismissed as fabricated tales for entertainment purposes. The most common experience reported by residents in this area is that on rainy nights after 10 p.m., their houses start shaking as if a train is passing by, and they hear the sound of a train passing even though there is no actual train passing by. Even worse, when they opened the window after clearly hearing the train sound, they couldn't hear it or see the train outside. They began to doubt if they had misheard it, but as soon as they closed the window, the train sound returned and their house shook. There were rumors of a woman pleading for the rescue of a child in flickering streetlights. Along with the sound of wheels, cries could be heard, and the appearance of the ghost had something in common. The most famous urban legend that arose the suspicion of whether the victims of that day's accident actually came out as ghosts is about a woman who walks along the railroad near the accident site, carrying a child, especially on rainy days. She was often seen walking in the rain without an umbrella, which struck people as strange. Those who happened to catch a glimpse of her were startled to the point of running away because, according to those who had seen her up close, both the woman and the child she was carrying were faceless. What's even more bizarre is that the woman carrying the child had no right arm, so the faceless child appeared to be floating in midair, hanging in front of the woman. After the train accident, the railroad crossing disappeared, leaving only a faint trace of its form. And there, on rainy nights, some said they witnessed a woman who neither crossed the railroad nor went anywhere, remaining completely motionless. If observed closely, her face was said to be partially distorted, and despite having no ankles, she stood upright. Furthermore, it was said that on some days, she was witnessed carrying a child with severed limbs. 
From that point onwards, more people started sharing their real ghost encounter stories. This incident happened to a friend of an elementary school teacher. It was in 1995, two years after the accident, when the friend was living in a motel near Kupu Station with the teacher to prepare for a national exam. They were particularly close because they were university classmates and high school friends. The teacher's friend loved drinking and had a high tolerance for alcohol, so he often came home late at night. But one day, his friend didn't come home again, and the teacher thought he might be out drinking and he just fell asleep. However, in the early morning hours, his friend returned home and told him, I drank and slept on the street last night, and someone hugged me. It was really warm. I just don't know how to describe that feeling. The teacher considered it awkward and brushed it off as something his friend said because he was embarrassed about drinking too much and falling asleep on the streets. But less than a month later, his friend didn't come home again, so the teacher went to sleep as usual. However, Around 5 a.m., his friend knocked loudly on the door, urgently asking him to let him in. Startled from his sleep, he quickly opened the door, and his friend, gasping for breath, began explaining the strange events that had taken place. Remember when I told you someone embraced me when I fell asleep on the streets? I think it was a ghost, he said. Curious about what had happened, the teacher asked him to provide more details. According to his friend's account, after a usual night of being intoxicated, he became too tired and simply lay down on the street. He started hearing strange sounds coming from his ear, so he listened carefully and realized it was the voice of a person which frightened him. At first, he dismissed it as the sound of people passing by, but as he listened attentively, a woman's voice whispered in his ear, repeating the words, You're not my son, not my son. Then, suddenly she let out a piercing scream, startling him to the point that he frantically fled home. His friend strongly believed that the figure who embraced him while he was sleeping on the streets was a female ghost, mistaking him for her own son. Following that incident, both of them eventually relocated to Seomyeon after some time. It is said that ghosts usually appear when they are unaware of their own death or when they have unfinished business. However, what is distinctive about the Kuppo urban legend is that they primarily feature the appearance of women and children, particularly those carrying a child. The accident occurred at 5.29 p.m and the train was scheduled to arrive at the next station at 5.41 p.m. In a span of only 12 minutes, these individuals went through a dramatic shift from life to death. Becoming ghosts who continue to search while worrying about their child, even in death, it is a terrifying yet heart-wrenching urban legend. There were other horrifying accounts as well, the experience of a student who attended school in Busan is slightly more aggressive. The student, who was desperately in need of a part-time job, was doing various odd jobs such as cleaning and waking up drunk passengers at Kupo Station. On a day with heavy rain, the student noticed a white cloth fluttering about 100 meters away on the railway tracks, but initially ignored it. She asked her colleague, who was also working there, to take care of it and left work. The next day, she noticed her colleague stop working there. But the student casually dismissed it, thinking her colleague quit because it was a tough job. Not thinking much of it, she continued to pick up trash along the railway tracks and once again saw the white cloth fluttering. She thought her colleague didn't finish her work and decided to go clean up herself. As she got closer, the figure gradually transformed into a human shape. She went near the figure and she saw a woman with short hair. She frantically ran back towards the station. Suddenly, something caught her foot, causing her to trip and lose consciousness. 
In a dazed state, the student woke up in the station's rest area with bandages loosely wrapped around her. She tried to get up, but she couldn't move her body. Unconsciously, she rolled her eyes and glanced at the rest area door. There was a woman in a white dress with severely distorted face and one arm, who was obviously not of this world, slowly approaching. As the woman extended her hand and grabbed her throat, she thought that was the end of her life. At that very moment, her colleague and emergency rescuers arrived and the woman disappeared. However, it was evident that even in death, the female ghost remained consumed by anger and hatred. This was understandable because in fact, the Kupu tragedy was a man-made disaster caused by unauthorized blasting by Samsung CNT. At that time, Samsung CNT, which was the construction contractor for the Korea Electric Power Corporation transmission line burial project near the accident area, carried out blasting operations without consulting the railway administration and damaged the track bed while installing underground power lines passing beneath the railway. The actual blasting work was subcontracted to Hanjin Construction, and the incident involved major corporations. Railway regulations strictly prohibited any blasting work beneath the tracks or even planting trees near the tracks. The construction company that undertook the KEPCO project, investing 20 billion won since December 1989 to construct a 345 kilovolts four-circuit underground power line, flagrantly disregarded the law and conducted the project. However, after the accident, Samsung CNT received a court order to pay 3 billion won in compensation to the railway authority and face the highest level of administrative penalty at the time, a six-month business suspension. Following the accident, Samsung CNT CEO Nam Jong-woo, Kim Bong-up, the head of the underground power line division at KEPCO, and field manager Ho jong chul were among the 16 construction personnel who were arrested. However, in the subsequent year, 1994, six executives, including the CEO who had been charged with negligent manslaughter in relation to their duties, were eventually acquitted by the Supreme Court due to a lack of direct responsibility for the accident. Moreover, this location itself carries its own narrative. Even prior to the Kupo train accident, which occurred over a decade ago, there were numerous shaman houses situated near Kupo Market, both in the past and at present. Among the local shamans at that time, there was one elderly shaman who had a bad reputation. She was said to have received divine power at a late age, and people doubted the authenticity of her practices. One day, this elderly shaman started going up the nearby mountain every week, carrying food and alcohol from Kupu Market to perform rituals. When the nearby merchants asked her about the purpose of her prayers, the elderly shaman explained that the spirits of over a hundred soldiers visited the shrine every night. She claimed that these spirits requested occasional offerings of food and drinks to soothe their restless souls, as they would assist her in her shamanic work. Afterward, her fortune-telling became more accurate, and the word spread, making her quite a popular shaman with many customers. So one day, the soldier spirits approached the elderly shaman and pleaded with her to stop the construction of a road through their mountain home. They believed it would desecrate their sacred grounds and warned of terrible consequences if the road was built. Unfortunately, the elderly shaman couldn't do much to halt a massive national project like the Name Expressway construction. As time went on, the elderly shaman passed away and things seemed to go on peacefully without any major incidents. However, fate had a different plan in store. Out of nowhere, the shocking Kupo train accident took place, shaking everyone to the core. The elderly residents of Kupo, who still vividly remember the shaman's prophecy, couldn't help but reflect on her words. 
The story told by that elderly shaman is that the low hillsides on both sides of the Name Expressway were originally the site of a fortress built during the Shilla dynasty to defend against foreign invasions. The soldier spirits who visited the elderly shaman were not modern soldiers, but the souls of those who died while defending the fortress, wielding swords and guns and wearing armor during the Japanese invasion. They had settled in the fortress they had built, protecting the land, and they were concerned that if the fortress was destroyed by the construction of the road, their connection to the main fortress and the citadel, which is now an ice rink, would be severed. The location of the accident and the haunted fortress where the spirits appear are just a short distance away, across a single road. After the accident, people in the vicinity of Tokchon Station in Pukku, Pusan, who later remember the words of this elderly shaman, were taken aback. There is also a story that real estate agents fabricated the urban legends during a time when redevelopment was imminent. Even investigative programs like Chase 60 Minutes covered the rumors of the Kupo train accident ghosts and even announced their intention to broadcast it. However, due to concerns about declining property values and fierce opposition from local residents, the program was ultimately not aired. Considering this, it is understandable why people say that humans are scarier than ghosts. Despite more than 30 years having passed, it remains a topic that evokes astonishment. Hopefully, such accidents and urban legends will never occur again. And that concludes our episode for today. If you have any captivating true crime ghost stories or intriguing urban legends you'd like to share with our viewers, please leave your comments below or feel free to send story ideas to my email. Thank you all for tuning in, and we look forward to bringing you more chilling tales in our next episode. Stay tuned and see you soon.